सभी इस वेबिनार के पार्टिसिपेंट्स को गुड आफ्टरनून और एज यूजल आई इन द लास्ट क्लास आई टोल्ड एवरीबडी और एवरीबडी नोज इट दो आर लर्निंग एस्ट्रोलॉजी ऑल द स्टडीज एंड ऑल द प्रोडिक्शन शुड बिगिन विद द प्रेयर ऑफ लॉर्ड गणेशा so for 10 seconds just to remember uh, lord ganesha and let's start for uh, this webinar now okay fine so uh, today uh, i want to just uh, uh, discuss one simple trick suppose uh, a patient comes uh, to you and shows you his uh, horoscope and uh, you prepare his horoscope and you want to rectify time or you want to know whether he is telling his uh, time correct it, it is correct or not superficially if you want to simply see suppose patient says my birth he was in 11 pm and uh, or patient says some me and shows his kundli and his uh, uh, answer is something else so by the seeing of uh, a, a single planet we can decide whether he is if patient is not sure whether he is am or pm and he is having some old birth chart then we can simply identify by seeing the position of a planet and uh, just to see uh, the position of uh, sun if you are seeing if patient says my birth is uh, he is he forget or he don't have knowledge that he his birth is in am or pm and uh, he is he is having some birth chart if by seeing just seeing the position of sun because if the uh, planet sun is in 12th house or 11th house this is a am time everywhere you you can find it is am time and as soon as sun rotates and sun revolves evening time the night time as night time it will be shifting towards fourth house third house or second house so by seeing just it's a simple trick you, we will elaborate this later so by seeing just simple trick we can identify what is his birth time and if it is required if uh, they are having some horoscope and telling something else you, you want to just rectify then this is a, one of the trick there are so many tricks by which we can rectify we can identify the timings uh, or events Uh, one of the ways is uh, they we used to ask people uh, their main life events like when you got married or when you got uh, uh, selected in some uh, job or entrance so these events only happen when your signs your uh, planets are in very exalted position and your dashas are in good position then only uh, these uh, Uh, good events happens in our life similarly if there are some accidents or some there are some uh, losses that can also be seen by uh, this uh, debilitation of some planet suppose a planet is debilitated and their dashas antar dashas comes in your life then that will be uh, very helpful to know uh, and that debilitation time will decide some losses some health issues uh, that all can be defined by that so just uh, uh, all these uh, things uh, uh, what uh, i am discussing is just uh, today i want to discuss you uh, with you with uh, about the dashas how we used to predict events good events losses gains uh, new events everything can be seen in the dashas so simply just uh, uh, if you all have 
have some notebook, please note it down. So, see, in Vedic, we use mostly Vim Shotri Dashas. There are uh, some other Dashas system also there. So, today, uh, our, my focus is totally discussing about Vim Shotri Dashas. Okay. So, uh, in the first class itself, uh, I have discussed uh, that astrology is totally depending on planets, Rashis. So, nine planets, 12 Rashis and 27 Nakshatras. Okay. So, now, uh, till now, we have discussed about Rashis, planets and houses. So, today, a uh, little introduction about Nakshatras, there are 27 Nakshatras. Okay. So, uh, we have discussed uh, in the, I think uh, Dr. Manish have also discussed about this. Uh, how we discuss about uh, and how we know in a birth chart what is your moon sign. So, there are two signs in the Western astrology they used to discuss uh, with uh, sun sign, but we uh, see moon sign. So, uh, moon sign is what is your moon sign that will be decided by the presence in which sign your moon is present. That will be your moon sign. Okay. Suppose your moon is in fourth house and the number written means the sign written there is two. Moon is in fourth house and number written two, then your moon sign will be anyone? Anyone can speak? What will be moon sign? Please, class. Please be attentive. I am just asking very simple question. It was discussed, in, I think, last class also. Suppose your moon is in fourth house and the number, the Rashi number written there is a two. Then what will be the moon sign? Taurus. Taurus. Right. right, right. Taurus. Very correct. So, Taurus is your moon sign. Okay. Similarly, if a, a moon sign doesn't depend um, on the in which house moon is present, it doesn't matter. But the sign, in which sign moon is present, this is most important. You have to note it down in which sign moon is present. If it is present in 12th, 12th sign, means in the house, 12th, 12th number is written, then your moon sign will be Pisces. So, moon sign will decide your mentals. Okay? Because, so, uh, we used to discuss about the moons. Okay? So, this much is clear. How can we decide our moon sign? Just by seeing a birth chart. You don't know anything. You have to tell simply, okay, oh, your Rashi is, uh, because we don't say about the moon sign, just to be said, in India, in especially north, if somebody says, Meri Rashi hai, this is my Rashi, then they just tell you they are moon sign. In Western, they say, if they say, this is my Rashi, then they will tell, this is, they will talk about sun sign. Okay? Similarly, what is number written in your first house is known as, please, class, anyone, what is Sir, Rashi number? Huh? Uh -huh. Ascendant. Ascendant, right. Lagna. In Hindi, we call it as a Lagna. And in Hindi, in Sanskrit, and in English, we call it as a Ascendant. Those who are very much particular about the language, those who don't know about this uh, Hindi. Those who are those who want to take class only in English, they must also learn about their Rashis because they are Sanskrit. This is Simba, Simba, Mesh. This is a Sanskrit. So we must be familiar. Aries, Mesh, Taurus, Brishab, Brisha. Okay. So uh, so first house is ascendant. So as soon as a birth chart comes in front of us, we have to see. Where is your moon sign? 
if it is in fourth house then uh, you have to see the number sign if it is 11th aquarius if it is 5 it is leo so simply so we yeah, yeah people those who don't know about astrology they they feel amazed okay by seeing just chart you are telling me this is my uh, moon sign okay so first house is ascendant it must be very clear ascendant and ascendant lord and the power of that birth chart is decided by these two your ascendant falls where if your ascendant means suppose uh, in your first house the number written is 2 and the lord of 2 means lord of taurus is please anyone venus venus lord of taurus is venus 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 venus, venus right good so uh, so uh, lord of taurus is venus so your ascendant is taurus and its lord is venus and if it is sitting if it's placed in fifth house third house 11th house wherever okay one more concept i think we have learned already their mool trikon rashi <coughs> mool trikon have you heard about this mool trikon and exalted and debilitated what are the mool trikon rashis Asa, okay, directly asking, what is the moon trigon Rashi of Venus? It is Libra. Okay. So we must be uh, uh, known. Trigon Rashi. Huh? what is this moon trigon okay so just to tell it there are some signs in which a particular planet feels very happy very good environment condition so there they are they feel some power they are powerful suppose uh, some rashis uh, some planets have got uh, uh, power to govern two rashis like venus like mars mars is having uh, power to uh, govern two rashis like uh, first one is aries and second one please class scorpio okay in hindi we call it as vrishya similarly uh, our uh, uh, this uh, venus has got two rashis that is taurus and libra uh, libra right we discussed moon multiple rashis leo uh, sorry uh, taurus and mars multiple rashis aries mars aries okay aries is 0 to 12 degree okay so suppose mars is uh, place in aries and it is of 0 to 12 degree then you have to say oh it is in moon trigon means it will give good results okay similarly mercury mercury moon trigon rashi is for mercury it is virgo the second rashi for mercury mercury has been decided gemini and virgo so first one is not moon trigon virgo is moon trigon in hindi we call it as a kanya so it is considered as a 16 degree to 20 degree virgo similarly jupiter comes jupiter also has got two rashis assigned two rashi jupiter has been assigned two rashis one is rashi one is sagittarius and second one is pisces so uh, sagittarius me dhanu in uh, in sanskrit we call it as dhanu so jupiter moon trigon rashi is sagittarius this is a 
zero to ten degree. Okay, in in birth chart, any birth chart, especially in uh, lagna chart, in D one chart, we see some degrees also also written. So you have to see when you see minutely, you have to see the degrees also. Okay, so for Jupiter, Moon Trikon Rashi is Sagittarius. Now comes Venus. Venus has got responsibility for two Rashi's, and they are Taurus and Libra. So uh, Libra is Mool Trikon Rashi of Venus. Means Venus is placed in Venus, then it is happy. It is more powerful. Zero to fifteen degree. Okay, so Libra. And Saturn, uh, ninth one is Saturn. Saturn has responsibilities for accountability for two Rashi's, and they are please class anyone? Capricorn and Aquarius. Right, right, very good. So Capricorn and Aquarius. So uh, Saturn, Moon, Trikon Rashi is Aquarius. That is Kumbh. So. Saturn is Aquarius, and it is zero to twenty degree. Okay, so uh, now zero to zero to twenty degrees. degrees. Okay, thank you. This is Aquarius. Saturn, Moon, Trikon Rashi, Aquarius, zero to twenty degree. Yes, thank you. So uh, from here it is clear if Saturn is placed in its own rashi means own uh, there are two rashis one is considered as a moon trigon if it is placed in aquarius and it is if it is of 20 degrees 0 to 20 degrees means suppose in a sign in a sign a planet can move up to 30 degrees okay so each sign is of 30 degrees so suppose in a house or a, in a road You have, if it is of thirty uh, kilometers, you have crossed twenty kilometers. Ten is remaining. Okay. So uh, similarly, if in a if in a uh, house you have to move thirty steps, you have moved forward twenty steps. Up to twenty steps, you are more happy, more powerful. So so like all th this three sixty degrees divided in thirty thirty degrees. So uh, I, I I have not gone beyond uh, 30 degree anywhere up to 20 16. Uh, we may go if it is needed. Then we will discuss about uh, 28 degree where it is needed. So just to remember, these are very basic principles. Each Rashi, each house is of, or each Rashi is of 30 degrees. Uh, if a planet is placed in a Any sign or in any house, if degree just by seeing degree, suppose it is written is in two degree, then what will you consider? Anyone, please. If it is written two degree, Mars is placed in Aries two degrees, then what we will consider? Just please, class. It has moved two degrees only. Two degrees. Just a very Means, small distance. Ah, it is. It has just entered, entered and moved only two degrees. If it is nine, if suppose if it is twenty nine degrees, means it is about to leave that how Rashi. Okay. So uh, uh, this much is clear, I think. So Mool Trikon, Sun Mool Trikon Rashi is Leo. Moon, Moon, Trikon, Rashi is Taurus. Mars, Aries, and Mercury, Virgo, and Jupiter, Sagittarius. Venus, Libra, and Saturn is Aquarius. Now, the planets, those who have got two signs, okay. So the remaining Rashi we consider as oh, it is an own sign. Means suppose a Mars is placed in Scorpio. Then we will consider. Oh, Mars is in its own sign. Sorry. It, okay. If it is, it is in place in Scorpio. Then 
we will consider Mars's own sign is ये तो it is its own sign like Libra is multicorn and Taurus is considered as for Venus Taurus is considered as their own sign so Taurus is happy because in Taurus Taurus if Moon is placed in Taurus then for Moon it is more powerful okay and if a Venus is placed in Taurus then it is own sign this is also beneficial if a planet is in own sign then this is also considered as a beneficial but less than moon trigon suppose if you uh, if you are a, in a house so a, a joint family is there uh, and we, your father is also there and your uh, uncle is also living or your grandfather is also living just like so a same family person but if you are happy with your father you are placed in moon trigon if you are placed your uncle you are in own sign means apne hi ghar mein ho you are in own house but little bit yeah or you are if you are comfortable with anyone then that will consider as moon trigon i think this is clear so let's move forward aage chale now one one concept also i think it has been discussed in the last class also exaltation and debilitation when a planet is exalted means it is uh, more powerful and when a planet is debilitated means it is losing its capabilities it is of less power so exaltation we have discussed i think like uh, but uh, uh, i'm just reminding again okay so write it down what is sign exalted sign for sun if you all have a uh, notebook please make a horoscope simply and write in a first house 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so please write it down like this okay so suppose if if sun is placed in first house means sun is here and this first house this first house is sign is aries okay this is aries and who is placed here sun is placed here means sun is happy here sun is exalted here okay but when it is Uh, now we have considered where it is debilitated means it is more powerful here but where it is debilitated so it is just in front of it just to seventh to it means where means libra okay so sun is debilitated in libra and who is the enemy of sun who is the biggest enemy of sun planet in our nine planets anyone class please Which planet is the biggest? Huh? Mercury. No. Louder, please. Mercury. Mercury. No. Rahu, what is it? It is Saturn. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. So similarly. we have seen exalted sign for sun is aries and debilitated is libra just in front of it it will be very easy to remember okay so just write saturn in just in front of his saturn so saturn is exalted in libra 
and debilitated in Aries, where Sun is exalted, Saturn is debilitated. Is it clear? In a sign, in which sign Sun is exalted, same place Saturn is debilitated. This much is clear? Clear, clear. Okay. Now, uh, I have to see uh, some, one more planet. That is, suppose we, we want to see about Jupiter. Jupiter is exalted in Kar. Kar means cancer. Cancer. So just, just write Jupiter in fourth, okay? And in front of this means in the 10th house or 10th Rashi, it will be debilitated. Is it clear? And in Capricorn, Jupiter will be debilitated. And in the 10th, where you have written 10 number, means 10th uh, sign, Capricorn, who will be exalted? Jupiter. Mars. No, no. Mars. Mars, Mars. will be debilitated in Capricorn. Mars will be exalted. Capricorn. Okay. Mars is exalted here and it is debilitated in cancer sign. Means in front of this, it will be debilitated. So uh, I have written four planets. Now, which one is remaining? Mercury. Mercury is exalted in sixth, means Virgo. 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 Right. Virgo. So, Virgo is a mole tricone for? Virgo is a mole tricone for? Mercury. Mercury, Mercury is exalted. So we write here Mercury. And from here you just count seven number. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So where eleven Rashi is written means Aquarius. So in Mercury we see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry. In twelfth. In mean means Pisces, Mercury is debilitated. Okay, so right, uh, just count from uh, here. Six means uh, this you call it first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, first to seventh. Okay, so Pisces, Mercury is debilitated. Okay, and where Jupiter is exalted. If anyone has a previous knowledge of astrology, please. It's a very simple, it's a very famous. Jupiter is exalted in which sign? Cancer. 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 Cancer.
and from here just count up to 7 so it will come to scorpio it is debilitated here okay so like that uh, this we have uh, we will discuss about rahu and ketu we will discuss later so just to, uh, because we will use these planets more and more so this is about our this about nine planets where they are exalted so i think we have prepared uh, in a chart itself where it is debilitated and where it is exalted so these two points are clear exalted and debilitation so um, let's move forward so now i was um, uh, i started topic with the discussion of dashas and dashas are important for prediction of any event, any good event, any bad event, any health issues, whatever. So dashas. In that dasha, we will discuss about the Bhimshotri dasha, which is mostly used in Vedic astrology. And uh, how these dashas start, how, what are the background of these dashas, how we got these dashas in a, suppose a pers person is born, how we will know in which dasha he is born? Okay, so I think if you all are a new learner, the, this will be new topic. This is the beginning of new topic. We will repeat once more whenever we will get time. So just uh, listen very carefully. Very simple concept is there. So just listen. So dashas are operation periods. Okay in Vedic astrology. And we have seen only dashas and yogini dasha, one, one of the more, one, one more concept is there that is known as yogini dasha. And we are here going to discuss about Vimshotri dasha. Shotri dasha. Okay. So how Vimshotri dasha starts how Vimshotri Dasa is calculated? Vimshotri Dasa is calculated in a birth chart. Just first, I was I discussed where moon is placed, that is your moon sign. Okay. And degrees are there. And we, we have discussed about nakshatras. So what we have to see is in which nakshatra the moon is placed. Okay. That will be decided by seeing degrees. If what degree of moon is there? Okay. So, what is the degree of that moon will decide what is the nakshatra in which that moon is placed. And each nakshatra has got some lord among these nine planets, each nakshatra has been given lordship. Okay. So that lord will be considered as beginning dasha. Is it clear? Suppose. Sorry. 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 Again tell me. Suppose. I am born in Aries sign. Okay. How I know, how I came to know I am born in Aries sign? Because my moon is placed in Aries. Is it clear? And my moon is of within 13 degrees, around 10, 12 degrees. Okay. So that is, that belongs to that belongs to Ashwani Nakshatra. That, and that Ashwani Nakshatra's lord is Ketu. So my first dasha started K 
Ketu. Okay, so suppose you have seen moon and just, just by seeing degree, suppose it is 10 degree to whatever. So degrees that they will decide in which nakshatra and that nakshatra, lordship of that nakshatra, because all the nakshatra planets, they are all movements, so it, it is, keep, it is uh, keeping on changing, changing. So it is that is why it is not fixed. Everybody born in different nakshatras. So I, I was born in Ashwani nakshatra and Ashwani nakshatra has been given lordship to Ketu. So that is why first Dasha starts Ketu. Okay. So from there, it is a kind of certain order is there. That order will be followed. Just to write it down, it will it will it will be clear when more examples and more uh, concepts will be given to you. It will, it will be this Vimshotri Dasha is calculating 120 degree. Your complete birth time is considered as a 120 years. And each planet has been given a particular timing. Suppose I am telling about, just I told Ketu, Ketu is for seven years. So just to uh, write it down uh, from uh, order beginning. So start from sun, write sun, in front of sun, write six. It is for six years, means if sun dasha comes in our life, it will remain for six years. Okay. So sun dasha is sun, this is considered as mahadasha. Again, these six years are divided in first, this is considered as a Mahadasha, then Antardasha, then Pratyantardasha, then Sukshma Antar, and then Pranantar. So, this timing will be divided again and again to minute level. Here, we are just discussing about the Mahadashas. Okay, how much time is given each planet? How much time is given for Mahadashas? Okay. So, sun is given six years. Moon is given ten years. Moon is given 10 years. Mars is given 7 years. Mars planet is given 7 years. Means if your dasha starts for Mars, it will be for 7 years. It will be effective for 7 years. After that, Rahu. Rahu Mahadasha when comes, it will be for 18 years means Rahu will play major role in your life for 18 years. After that, Jupiter will come. It is a fixed order. Jupiter will be for 16 years. Jupiter will be for 16 years. After Jupiter, we get Saturn, Mahadasha. Saturn is for 19 years. Saturn is for 19 years and Mercury. After Saturn comes Mercury. Mercury is for 17 years. Mercury is for 17 years. Then comes Ketu. Ketu Mahasa comes for 7 years. 
and after Ketu comes Venus. Venus is for 20 years. So this is the order. Is it clear? So sun is for six years, moon is for 10 years, Mars for seven years, Rahu for 18 years, Jupiter for 16 years, Saturn for 19 years, and Mercury for 17 years, Ketu for seven years, and Venus for 20 years. So we will have to remember this. We will have to learn uh, by heart this. If it is asked how, how many years it will. In softwares, in apps, in, these all are written clearly. So in these six years, each planet will be, uh, these six years will be divided for each planet. That planet will get timing according to its, its size and planetary motion. So like uh, those who are fast moving, those who are slow moving, those who are far away, those who are bigger sizes, according to that, these calculations are yeah. Okay. So this is about Bhim Shotri Dasna. For uh, minute details, we will repeat it again. Just note it down. This is about the Bhim Shotri Dashas. This much is clear. So uh, today we have discussed about exaltation, debilitation, Mutri Kun, and Bhimshotri Dasha. Bhimshotri Dasha will be more clear when we will discuss about Nakshatra. Nakshatra topic is a big topic. It will require two, two, two and a half hours to three hours to explain, to learn. And to learn, it will take more time, but to explain each and everything about Nakshatras, it requires mega class, some big class will be there. So uh, either, either in next class or next to next class, I will discuss about Nakshatras also. So suppose if uh, for this much time, we have learned uh, about some of the basic principles, basic rules. So one of the things, now uh, it comes in our mind when we are beginning learning or wherever we are, so how uh, these things will be correlated? How these planets will be correlated when it is placed somewhere, when it is where, where it is. So as for uh, uh, all, we are just physicians, uh, correlation will be according to their uh, placement. If it is, suppose a planet is placed just like I told, if it is in exalted sign, okay, good. If it is in uh, own sign, that is also good. Multipon is good. If it is placed in some malefic sign, that will not be good. If it is placed in enemy sign, that will not be beneficial. Okay. And some planets have got some, uh, the, like we have told about their Karakatwas. Suppose Rahu. Rahu is making the things bigger. Amplifier. Rahu is a kind of amplifier. Remember two words. Rahu is amplifier and Mercury is multiplier. If they are happy, if they are in good position, they will am amplify that. If they are in bad position, that will amplify by that. Similarly, Ketu, uh, 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 Ketu is, this will narrow. Means it will reduce the effects. It will shrink the karkatvas. Suppose if you want to, uh, if you, uh, you are supposed to enjoy wealth and Ketu is placed in second house, then it will reduce chances. Similarly, if Rahu is placed in second, it will amplify the chances. 
See, resultant will be something, so many things we, have, we will have to consider. But by seeing, likewise, today one more interesting thing, just very simple thing, but it will, it will make you smile and happy. How can we see about the uh, relationship? Just by seeing Ketu, so I, as I, in the beginning itself I told, wherever Ketu is there, it will reduce or it will separate because Ketu, Ketu is considered as a separate planet. Okay, suppose K2 is in your third house. You must, uh, if uh, by seeing your house, just see uh, if K, in which house your K2 is placed and you see that relationship, how much you are close to that relationship and how much you are far away from that relationship. If K2 is in third house, that means you are not happy. You are not happy, uh, happily related with your younger brother and sisters. Means yeah, this will reduce the happiness between brother and sister. It will separate. It will it will act as a separate. If it is placed in fourth house, the same thing. Mother or mother. And for relationship, first you uh, you first house is you. Second house your kutum, your whole family. Third house your brother and sister. Fourth house your mother. And uh, from there, we, and ninth house is con considered as your father. Seventh house, your partner, your spouse. Okay. And from there, we can learn. Suppose you want to know about your grandfather or grandmother. Okay. So if I consider ninth house as a, your father's house, then what will be your grandfather's or grandmother house? So from ninth to fourth, because fourth house is mother's. From ninth to four is considered as your grandmother. Is it clear? A very simple concept, just you have to apply it. And suppose you want to know about your which house which house is your mother-in-law's house. Your mother-in-law, who will be your mother-in-law? Which house? Seventh is your partner, either you are male or female. Seventh is your partner's house. So from seventh to fourth means that is tenth. Tenth house will be considered as your mother-in-law or either you are male or female. Similarly, if you want to say uh, maternal uncle, mamaji, how you will consider, uh, suppose, Younger, your mother's younger brother. How how you know? Younger will be seen by your mother's younger brother, means your mama ji will be seen by fourth to third, that is sixth house. Okay, so if Ketu is placed in sixth house, means there will not be a good relation or you will be not much attached with your mama ji. If Ketu is placed in seventh house, there will be separation. Separation can be of any kind. It's not that you are going to fight each other, you are separated. There, uh, life will create some situations that will make you separate. Suppose Ketu is placed in fourth house, then a child may move far away from mother. May he may go to hostel. He may go uh, ship to foreign land, he may like that. Or similarly, if it is in uh, seventh house, you may be uh, kept far away from a spouse, mm -hmm. either due to job. So it's not simply only one reason. This may be due to your job condition, your family situations. So relationships can be seen very easily. For each relation, you can decide. You can see. Your grandmother, I have uh, means father's mother. Your grandfather's father's father means ninth to ninth will be considered your grandfather. First to third, your brother, elder brother will be seen by 11th house. 
So suppose you want to see wife of your elder brother, means your bhagni. So wife will be seen by seventh. So you just make eleventh as a first. So uh, just to count from there up to seven. That will be your bhavi, your brother's wife. So just rotate that relationship. First basic relationship means third is your younger brother, sister, fourth is mother, and uh, sixth and seventh is your spouse, ninth is your father, and eleventh is your elder brothers, elder sister. Seventh is your partners, like that. Okay. So just uh, this is a very simple uh, trick. You, uh, uh, it, it is beneficial also because when you are seeing some chart, people ask so many questions. See uh, how my how my relations will be with my brother, my elder brother, my sister. You can see if it is Ketu is placed, if Rahu is placed, if um, Mars is placed, if a um, uh, Sun is placed, they all will decide that. Okay. Similarly, uh, we, uh, you have heard about this one. Means, uh, uh, suppose a child birth is there in your house, in your family. I have heard from so many people. My this daughter was born, and I was promoted. So, if your Venus is very in placed in very good condition, then you will be get. It's like that the uh, predictions or calculations okay, there. So by seeing, just by seeing a chart, see the ascendant. Ascendant number, what is sign is there? And what is planet placed in that ascendant? Suppose in a first house, Rahu Ra is Rahu is written, or any sign is placed, whatever sign is placed, it will amplify and amplify that sign also, and it will amplify that house first. Suppose your house first house is of your brain, your your mind, your head, or your personality by seeing seeing by that. So if it is a Rahu is placed, means you will be overthinker. You will be very imaginative. Illusion, delusion, all these can be seen by this. Because Rahu is there. Suppose Mars is placed, you are angry. If Mars is placed in second house, that is house of speech, your harsh speech, because anger. Mars is angry planet. So it will distribute its uh, significators wherever it is placed. It will go with its significators. First, four, seven, and ten. These are also good houses. They are also beneficially house, beneficial houses. Okay. First, or seventh and tenth, they are known as center, center of that chart or kendra. Is it clear? So, first one is known as trine. So, uh, during teaching or uh, during uh, reading, may I ask, what is your, what are the planets in your trine? Trine means one, five, nine. We have to see trine, then center. That is one, four, seven, and ten. So the lots of trine give benefit results. Okay? They are bound. The Lord of Lagna is both the Lord of Quadrant and Trine.
it is supposed to give benefit results if lord of lagna is in quadrant or in trine they are supposed to give benefit results irrespective of its nature and similarly three third one is third rule is third house third sixth and 11th lord of third sixth and 11th house are malefic and four four eight and 12 houses this is about house that is about the lordship this is about the house fourth eight and 12th house are also not considered as a good house is the planets placed here or the signs placed here will not be much beneficial so natural benefics and natural malefic so natural benefics Uh, i told quadrant 1 4 and 10 they are natural benefits means they are the quadrants trines trines are very important so just by seeing a chart you have to see in trine what are the planets in what are the quadrants how they are placed in fourth house eighth house twelfth house how planets are there which signs are there and then some prediction some kind of predictions we can produce we can result give results so i think the these are the basic things we have discussed uh, let me remind again exaltation debilitation learning is very important trying is about and second one is Full tricon. That is also important. What are the signs? What are the uh, uh, which are the planets? And initial in first second class itself, I I have discussed about their nature, elementary nature. Like uh, which sign is of which nature? Like fiery sign, earthy sign, and um, Second one is Ardi sign. Airy sign. Third one is, and watery sign. Fourth one is. So first sign is, I am sim uh, similarly five, five, six, seven, eight, then nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have to learn about these signs also. <coughs> we have means uh, keep it in mind. Means if Uh, suppose in a first house in a first house if two number is written two number is written means it is taurus taurus is airy sign airy sign means air like means uh, imaginative if it is four number is written means sensitive water element is there more sensitivity is there if Or second is earthy sign. Second one is earthy sign. So two number is written. It is earthy. So earthy sign is fixed. Okay, grounded personality. If three is written, more imaginative. If four is written, means more sentimental. Like five is written. This is a fiery sign. More angry personalities. 
So Nietzsche is not only angry personality. Suppose five is sun, more brighter. It's a good one. If sun is placed in a good position, then it, it, it will be very helpful. If sun is exalted, then person is bound to get benefits from government, government job, or some so many benefits from sun. Is it clear? So we we have to remember this science, science, nature. Okay. So in Hindi, just uh, I uh, uh, discussed Agni, Prithvi, Vayu, Jal. You have to remember this. Fiery, Ardhi, Airy, Watery. Fiery, Ardhi. Airy watery, fiery are the airy watery. This will repeat. Okay, so um, I think uh, this much is enough for today, and we will discuss some more concepts. But in each class, we will try because our effort is and our aim is to. Make you learn, not just completing the course. Go slowly, but whatever is discussed, just learn today itself, because topic covered is very little. And if you postpone, then if we move on, because there are more difficult conditions. There are yogas. There are uh, uh, like nakshatras. So it will uh, be become more and more difficult for you to understand. These repetitions will be for two to three classes. Just for two to three classes, then we will move on further. Okay. And about the houses, about the houses, it is first house. Which are the body parts? Because we have to learn about the diseases. So, what are the body parts that this is fourth house? What are the body parts? Lungs problem is there means lungs related to watery. And one more. Similarly, what are the body parts for seventh? What are the body parts for twelfth? For knees, which uh, what are the body parts in tenth house? Anyone remember? What are the body parts for twelfth house? Anyone remember? Foot, sir. Foot. Feet. Feet. Right. Similarly, second. For th I ah uh, throat. And your eyes, right eye. Ear. Suppose deafness comes. A person comes with deafness. You have to see your third house. It is. It is. Uh, how your third house is. What are the aspects? Huh? One more topic. Just I want to revise. Revise. Just to take a two minutes. Uh, what are the aspects? Each planet has given one aspect compulsorily. That is seventh. Means each planet sees its to up to uh, to its seventh. And uh, when it comes to our come out about the Jupiter, Jupiter has got fifth and ninth. One two more. Aspects so five, seven, and nine. Okay, what about this um, Mars? Four, seven, eight, sir. Four, seven, eight. Good. And Saturn? Three, seven, ten, sir. Three, seven, ten. Good. Venus? S seven. Seven. So some planets have got only one, and this about Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter. They have got more than one. So it's clear. I think uh, uh, by now you all must have some uh, awareness. What is astrology? What are the planets? What are the houses? What is ascendant? What is moon sign? What is sun sign? Sun is placed in which sign? It is sun sign. Moon is placed in which sign? That is moon sign. 
your Bhimshotri Dasa starts from the moon or the moon is in place is placed in which nakshatra so now today introduction of nakshatra has also come now after, hereafter we will learn about the benefits of knowing about nakshatras because in nadi astrology or in further astrological predictions nakshatras are also seen very minutely okay so thank you all for patient hearing i think we will discuss in next class some more topics okay thank you bye thank you sir thank, thank you sir, sir.